Well, welcome to Farm Tech 2014. We've got the whole Real Ag team, Sean Haney, Deborah Murphy, Lindsay Smith, and... Real Ag Rick for today. <laughs> <laughs> for right now. Uh, Rick, uh, Farm Tech 2014 is just wrapping up. It was, uh, what, what, what would be your evaluation? Wow. That would be my evaluation. I think it starts with Chris Hadfield as our banquet speaker, which had a huge wow effect. And then just, wow, like everybody has such a good time here. You know, there's a lot of negativity in the farm community, whether it's about prices or transportation. That's not what I heard being talked about in the hallways or in the sessions. People are come to the show, they bring a fresh attitude, and they leave pumped up about farming, which is really why we want to do this show. Lindsay, what do you think of Chris Hadfield? Uh, well. I'm a little claustrophobic, so his um, description of what it is like to actually go to space and be in space was rather overwhelming. Amazing, but also kind of freaky for me. Um, however, I think for, for me, well, it's an amazing to sort of see the images that he took from space and explain what a spacewalk is like and all those sorts of things. Um, his quote at the when he was taking questions, um, you know, there, he takes a, a bit of flack for, uh, you know, there are people who are critical of the money spent in the space industry and how useful it is and all those sorts of things. And his, you know, he's got a really positive way of, of kind of framing that. But his quote was that it takes uh, relentless, competent optimism is what the space, and so does farming, so does agriculture. And I thought that for me made, that was just, it made the night. It was a phenomenal quote. And, and like Rick said, I mean, it's that optimism, that positive side of it, of even when, you know, things aren't great, uh, finding solutions, finding new ideas, yeah. um, embracing what's, what's working and working at things that aren't is, it was pretty neat. Making yeah. something happen. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better, but I'd have to breathe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, think we I all don't do that. Problem. Lindsay doesn't truly breathe every so many, like five minutes. Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, Deb, what, what did you think? What was your highlight of the show? Um, I'd say Chris Hadfield was pretty high up there. I liked his analogy. So as a speaker, he brought it, he really brought it to the audience level. So even talking horsepower, like millions of horsepower yes. involved in getting into space. Uh, other than that, I think just networking, like there are a lot of fantastic farmers here. You pay money to come to this event and it's one of the best in Canada. So. Yeah, so we've been across, you know, across Canada for farm shows through the winter time and, and this is still for me the big highlight. Um, the the uh, Rick said about the, the networking, the positivity, there's really people here that are, tr that are managing their farm, right? Mm -hmm. There's a difference between I run a farm and I'm really managing a farm and there are people here that are, there. there's a huge passion for agriculture at this conference. Mm -hmm. And hats off to the organizers. Um, you know, I certainly, I always ask people, so which session did you go to? I mean, the concurrent session format, although apparently it takes many paragraphs to explain, <laughs> according to Rick. How many years ago was that? That was in 2000. We had a whole page in the show guide that it explained what a concurrent session right, was and, and how, how to pick it yes. and I read it and now I'm confused. Right. So, um, but the concurrent session format, it does, I do like that people, you know, present more than once. You can, you, you do have to shuffle your schedule a, a bit, but the app really helped with that, I think, this year. And I love just asking people, like, what did you take in? Um, and they've always, I mean, they're saying, oh, yeah, I heard great things about this one. I'm going there next. And, you know, everybody sort of gets, a, you know, a take-home message from each of them. Um, and it's it's a, the app, certainly, and, and even just chatting, okay, you've got to go see them next. Go see them tomorrow because it's really well worth it. And, you know, that sort of stuff. It's a, it's a great way to um, really play up even the next day's conference and those sorts of things. I, I really like that format. Well, we can't say enough about our speakers. Like, this year we really tried to challenge, especially our concurrent speakers, don't just do a PowerPoint, do something fun. Yep. You guys stepped right up to the mic with, you know, Real Ag Live, off the cuff, some blooper videos. We had people like Cami Ryan and Scott Mears and yourselves using live interactive polling. Uh, I caught a bit of Marilyn Smith's. All that was on the screen was the homepage of her website. She was standing on chairs. She put on a Miss Fruit and bed Vegetables ribbon and a crown. Uh, and then Errol Anderson, who last spoke at Farm Tech 2000, was rocking an overhead projector. So it's so nice. old that Retro. it's now new, Retro. yeah. <laughs> How about Merle Good getting the Farm Tech uh, award? Yeah, that's certainly a highlight for me, a chance to present, uh, you know, really a legend in, in farm management and agriculture with the recognition he deserves. Uh, when, when the Farm Tech Award's given, it's really coming from the entire audience. And Merle has helped so many guys manage, think about, uh, orchestrate succession plans that it's really made a difference for the overall profitability of so many farms plus what he's done to help teach other accountants and lawyers how to do it and I said it in the speech we gave to him last night but when we were redesigning the show in 
probably in 2002, it was Merle that said, you know, you should put farm management on the agenda. And everyone thought, who wants to hear about farm management? Farm management. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of guys that come to the show. You know, we talked about it being the big innovative farmers that come to the show and they said, you know, it's great that there's agronomy stuff, but I can get that at my dealership and other places. It's the farm management, the healthy eating, the fun and interactive sessions that we come for. So having seven rooms running at a time, you know, there's, there has to be one session that, that is right up your alley, and I think that's why guys love the show. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, 15th year, right? Yep. Last night you're at the mic, you're, uh, you're, giving, you're presenting the award to Merle. Yeah. As you look out at the crowd, and we're looking out at the empty room right now before they serve lunch, which we got to get out of here, <laughs> what do you think, how far the show's grown? What, what do you think about it? Uh, I think about in 2000, in 2001, our attendance was really declining. And the planning committee had at least two votes. Do we go or are we done? Has it run its course? Because it had been a direct seating trade show with some sessions. And direct seating was already becoming widely adapted. And, and it wasn't really running that well. And we said, we're going to do this. And the committee met lots. At that time, we also had a couple individuals that deserve a lot of credit. Leighton Blaschko was with BASF at the time, and Jay Bruggenkate, who was with Dow Agrosciences. And they came to us and they said, can we be on the planning committee? And we kind of went, like, the industry wants to be on the planning committee? Do we have a policy for this? Is there a rule? This is and for farmers. We thought, they're just there to write checks to pay for the show. And then we said, you know what, we need to figure out what we can do to get more out of the show from their behalf. So they really taught us this is what we as an industry need to participate. These are things that we could try doing, which led to some of the special events, uh, which really transformed the show because farm tech isn't just for the delegates. It's not just for the host. It's everybody's show. Everybody here has, a, has an ownership in it. And I mean, all week long you have people coming along and saying, this is the best show ever. Or people telling me this is my 13th or this is my second. We fired out some trivia questions, right? Like, name the two Olympic gold medalists that spoke at the banquet and name the year. And it took three minutes till somebody had the answer. Because the guy has a file on a shelf with all the farm tech proceedings, he had to look it up to know the year, but people love the show, and that's why we do it. So what's next? Yeah, how do you top Chris had Ma Yeah, Commander <laughs> had I mean, real egg well, live, obviously, yeah, obviously, but after I that. I mean, we're waiting for our invitation for next year. But, That's, uh, you know, how do you top that? He went to space. Alexis. Why did you have to ask that? Yeah. Because uh, I try to vow not to think about farm tech until at least right. February 5th. But right. um, that's the question we get every year. And, and every year we manage to find something that's different and unique. Yes. And, yes. and certainly Chris Hadfield's going to be very difficult to top. But if I look over the, the years that we've been doing this, we've had so many good keynote speakers that, you know, who would have thought an astronaut would be the right guy to talk to the crowd? Mm -hmm. Or who would have thought you know, General Rick Hillier. How are we going to top him a couple of years ago? Or Ron McLean was so popular with the hockey fans. Mm -hmm. You know, we put our heads together. And the other thing that we do is we send out an evaluation and, and we get three or 400 evaluations back and we read every one of those. And we have a spot on our website to suggest a speaker in. And we want people to give us their ideas. We want companies to give us their ideas. And all we ask is that when you fill it out, let us know why you think that guy's great. Putting a name down like, oh, you should have Bill Clinton. You know, there's there's a point of realism on there. But if you tell us where you've seen it... <laughs> For the not, lowly sum of $120,000, yeah, like, <laughs> you too can sponsor yeah. Bill Clinton to be the speaker. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly a limit, but we need those ideas. So if, if you've been there somewhere else and you've seen a great speaker, fill out the form Please. on the website. It goes in a database. Don't text me. Don't BBM me. Don't WhatsApp me. Don't tweet what? me because yeah. I can't keep track of BBM. That's oddly <laughs> yeah. enough how Sean with an Android and me with an iPhone communicate most of the time. Yes, and I accept full responsibility for that. <laughs> you still have um, a yeah, Blackberry with the rollerball on the side? <laughs> Close. Close. Do you have like you have a little joystick one or what do you oh, have? Okay. Oh, I have a loner no, phone right now, but typically it's a touch screen. So is they your have, they is have your phone screens. older than you? I think so. <laughs> Though somebody did think that Deborah was my daughter last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deborah. Oh. Yeah. I think we're getting them pulled off the oh, screen. Yeah. The oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. out of here. Yeah. Apparently, we have to do the closing keynote today. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Want to well, throw in one last thing? It hasn't been announced at the show yet, but you, as viewers, will get to oh, find out. Uh, we did ManVan prostate cancer oh, testing yeah. here at the show, and what's going to be announced shortly is that even though we said we were going to give $10 to cancer research for every man tested, we bumped that up to an even 10 grand. So, 
That's farm wow. tech giving back to the community. So Fantastic. that's awesome. Great. Yeah, great. Wow. that is awesome. That Congratulations, is on that. that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, it was good. Okay, well, Rick, thanks for joining in the Real Ag team. I know that uh, this will hurt your reputation. Yes. But, uh, well, it ain't much of a reputation, a wreck, <laughs> apparently. It'll help ours. Can we yeah, put exactly. those speaker evaluations? <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot, and congratulations on another great conference. Thank you.